Hey guys, this is Tom at VSC. It seems like a lot of people want to know how we validate uh, calibration profiles on our trucks, and this is really how we do it uh, in the end. After we get uh, trucks off the dyno and we're finished with that uh, part, we put them on the road. Uh, we verify how they operate at um, medium and uh, high barometric pressure areas, and then we put them back on the dyno and then validate power levels. And then finally, we take them into the mountains. So I am in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and this is where we do a ton of testing. And I wanna talk about two or three things that we use to verify our calibrations are good. So in this truck, we have HP tuners. This is our 2021 L5P. This has our FTR turbo mounted to it. Um, that's the stock size turbocharger. And what we do on HP tuners is we verify that uh, using our pit list that the truck is doing what we're commanding it to do. So on that scanner that's sitting over there on the passenger seat, and I know that this is slightly dangerous, but we do this a fair amount. Um, it's kind of the only way to collect data and real world stuff and actually discuss about it, is to build a histogram that compares how much airflow the turbo is bringing in to what the pressure ratio of the turbocharger is operating at. And pressure ratio is defined as the turbocharger pressure and gauge plus the barometric pressure that the, the, the truck's operating at. And we're in the mountains, so it's at like 10.1 pounds right now. So we have a scalar being applied um, to the high altitude tables of nearly uh, 0.9. So this truck's nearly uh, in the full high altitude tables or uh, otherwise known as low barometric pressure. Um, so anyways, it's your gauge pressure, so boost pressure, plus atmospheric pressure or the barometric pressure, divided by the barometric pressure and then minus a constant of one. That'll give you a pressure ratio. So we plot how much airflow the turbo is ingesting compared to the pressure ratio the turbocharger is operating at and we start sticking the turbine outlet temperature into that plot and that gives us a really good metric of how the turbocharger is performing so GM allows these turbos to run nearly up to 420 degrees which is the end of the sensor scale from the factory we're obviously going to hit that even with the more efficient turbocharger up here in the mountains and a lot of times on the flat areas just because of the fact that is how hard this truck utilizes these turbos. Never worry, there's a big intercooler that removes all that sensible heat of com uh, air compression that is generated by Boyle's Law. So we can't really control that. We can lower boost pressure which lowers uh, the compression heat but it, it doesn't really take away from the fact that if we're gonna drive the turbocharger harder, we are going to make more um, heat from compressing air. Um, I didn't invent Boyle's Law, and it is what it is. So <clears throat> that is how we validate turbocharger performance on the compressor side. How we validate the turbocharger overall performance is what you see right here on the left, and we use this setup all the time, drag racing, slip pull trucks, we literally use it all the time that's why it's taped together but on the left you see exhaust pressure and on the right you see uh, boost pressure both of those register in gauge pressure um, so the reason why this is important is because a lot of people get excited about the term drive pressure or drive pressure ratio and drive pressure ratio is the relationship of drive pressure and exhaust pressure divided by how many pounds of boost pressure the turbo's uh, generating. As long as both your instruments are registering gauge like they are, uh, your calculation's perfect. So, um, something to keep in mind with drive pressure. On a variable geometry turbo, on a truck like this that's designed with emissions equipment and everything else um, intact, you're never gonna get a drive pressure ratio of one. If you have a VGT turbo and the drive pressure, you ever get it to equal one, even at full throttle, the turbo is gonna be built so loose, the vane cage and rotating assembly will be 
built so loose that the exhaust brake function won't work. Um, it'll be super lazy getting in the boost, um, like this turbo's not, and it just it just is going to drive like crap. So these motors are designed with uh, to be able to handle a lot of drive pressure. Um, so how much drive pressure is too much? I don't know. It, it's literally all over the place depending upon load, uh, the adiabatic load, meaning how much load under boost and um, engine RPM and compressor flow. So right now we're going down the road and I just tow into it and we're a drive pressure ratio of like eight pounds of boost or five pounds of boost and eight, uh, eight pounds of drive. So pretty decent drive pressure ratio. But what if I told you that you could easily get uh, three or four uh, to one drive pressure ratio? It's super easy, you just tow in, turbocharger comes up on boost, drive pressure goes way up before boost pressure goes up. And it uh, that's just kinda, it's kinda the way that it works. The VGT, uh, the variable vane turbo, closes down and it builds two things. Exhaust heat, which is called uh, enthalpy of the exhaust, and exhaust pressure. So a lot of people think you just need exhaust velocity to drive it, but about 70 to 75% of the driving energy behind the turbocharger is related to the pressure drop, which is called isenthalpic expansion through the turbine. So we get a lot of um, removal of heat energy through the turbine stage from the exducer to the inducer. Um, and we also get exhaust velocity when the veins open and close. So what we end up seeing is a big spike in drive pressure followed by a decent charge up of boost pressure. That's called spool up. If you had just a fixed vein turbo, um, they you could get a pretty good drive pressure out of them, but they have an AR associated with them. Typically, they're built loose enough that they can make some pretty decent power only at the critical speeds that the turbo is efficient at, and those have their own compressor map. A VGT turbo has um, a variable AR, and the relationship of AR has everything to do with how far the veins, the turbocharger veins, are open or closed. So right now, turbocharger veins are sitting at about 60-65%. We tow into the truck, turbocharger vein snap closed into the 80s, and then uh, turbo boosts up. Uh, the ECM sees that the turbo is making its commanded boost, and then all is well. So that's kind of the way the drive pressure uh, works. Um, our, this is a switchable tune truck, so with the FTR loaded, this is a completely stock profile, and you can easily see if I hammer the truck, drive pressure goes nearly two to one, and that's just the way that these trucks are. So there's a big spike, followed by pressures uh, around the 25 PSI of boost, and then around 40 pounds of gauge pressure on drive. So the, the turbo is operating properly, but it still can near the two to one drive pressure. We typically do not worry a lot about drive pressure unless the drive pressure ratio goes high enough to cause EGTs to get out of control, or we push the turbo off of the map, or we see a power change on the dyno where the, the power associated with high exhaust pressures is going to um, cause the truck to unseat exhaust valves and just be really hard on it. Or we f fear that we could be beating on the thrust washer or the thrust bearing too hard on the turbo. So if I turn the truck up quite a little bit and we get into a much larger tune position and I hammer it, the we get a little bit larger pressure spike, but it's not that much bigger of an exhaust pressure or drive pressure ratio. Turbo seems to be pretty happy there. So we, like I said, we don't get super excited about drive pressure ratio up here in the mountains where we're already four pounds lower in uh, pressure than sea level. We do need to take boost down, we do. Like those are high altitude table tuning medium altitude table tuning. We do have to take um, commanded boost pressure out so we don't blow the turbo up, keep things on the compressor map. Um, because the turbo is starting with lower net positive suction head pressure um, because of the barometric pressure being lower. So that's kind of the way that the drive pressure ratio works. Um, we do keep these things in check. We monitor them all the time. But 
don't get too worried or wrapped around the axle when you see drive pressure ratios higher, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. A couple other companies have done some pretty decent videos on them. Uh, Duramax tuner, uh, calibrated power. They have one that's out there, it's worth watching. Um, we'll make one in a controlled environment so you don't see me driving down the road um, kind of like simulating gauge control, but that's what we got. If you guys have any other questions, just hit us up on social media or give us a call. Thanks.